Father God, we're grateful to be able to be back in your house, worship you today. Thank you, Father, for all that has happened up to this point as we prepare to open the very word of God. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of worshiping an awesome God. Thank you for Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. And he did that for us. And that's what compels us to come back from Sunday to Sunday and sing praises and honor you and worship you. So today, this is your day. This is your day. And indeed, like the song says, take our heart and seal it. Seal it and prepare it for the courts above. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, praise team. Uh, thank you, Linda. Uh, thank you for, uh, for your coming today. Because we've gathered to worship an awesome God. And Keith, just uh, when he mentioned coming in and how beautiful the day was, uh, Mom and I talked about that on the way over as well. Indeed, a beautiful day. And uh, then Kermit, you stole my thunder. Uh, you talked about how beautiful the moon was, full moon. And I was sharing that with mom. I said, look, the moon is working overtime last night. It's still shining. And you know, the full moon's kind of a love moon, they tell me. I don't know. And I wanted to reach over and grab mama's hand while we were looking at the moon. But then I realized that as dangerous as taxing is, that when I grab her hand, that is more dangerous. So I decided to just kind of leave that alone. But it's interesting. I, I love to watch you when you're, uh, when you're here worshiping, singing. And I love to kind of share with the farmers out in the uh, welcome center when they're coming in. And today I was kind of busy. My computer and my uh, iPad wasn't working right. And that meant that I wasn't working right. So I just kind of come by and observe them. Several of them were talking uh, over and talking about their gardens and the farms. And uh, I saw Danny talking to a couple of our people. And Danny, I didn't get all that was going on, but I heard something about cabbages. And then all of a sudden I saw you raise your hand that high. So if you've got cabbages that high, let me look at them, okay? Uh, but they, they have a great time in comparing. Matter of fact, uh, as we begun our garden season this spring, I was playing and trying to get ahead of the other guys. Uh, one of the guys reminded me that he's already got potatoes out of his garden. So, man, you've got to kind of watch when you talk to these farmers. We, uh, we have a way of stretching it just a little bit sometimes. But anyway, it's great to be here. You didn't enjoy that near as much as I did. So turn your Bibles to, to Daniel, the fifth chapter. Now, for those of you that mark your Bibles, uh, uh, how many marks do you have in there for this year? In the fifth chapter, Keith has been in this chapter. I've been in the chapter a couple of times, I know, and I'm back in it today. But last week reading, I come across a passage of scripture that kind of caught my attention and it carried me back to these passages. We're going to read, well, we've titled our message uh, today, Golden Vessels, Golden Vessels, and we're going to read just uh, the first five verses of Daniel for uh, our beginning, and then we'll be sharing the others as we move through the message. But if you have already marked your Bible or been marking your Bible, and you have a recent uh, mark in there that I was in Daniel 5, even this year, this is not a rerun. This is not a rerun. This, this is the real thing, my friends. This is the real thing. So let's read the scripture, then we'll get into our outline uh, just a little bit. Belshazzar, 5 verse 1. Belshazzar, uh, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden vessels of silver which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem uh, that the king and his princes his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple 
of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and the prince and his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. And while the party was going on, while desecrating uh, the vessels from the holy temple was going on, in that same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw part of the hand that and just portions of verse 6, and the king's countenance was changed, and it was very troubled. This is the reading of the Word of God today. Now, Daniel is part of prophecy. It's part of history, and it's part of prophecy. You cannot study the book of Revelation without studying at least the latter part of Daniel. So that is a very important book. Daniel was a man of God. God had called Daniel, he'd given him a special talent to interpret dreams, and he hadn't done that for Nebuchadnezzar in his time, and now he's doing it again uh, for, he's doing it again uh, for, for this particular king that is in uh, Belshazzar, that is in the kingship at this time, he's doing it again. Daniel had a talent from God that no other person, at least in the king's palace, had. He was able to interpret the dream. And it was here that, that, the, that Babylon now was just about to fall. As a matter of fact, it was already under siege. And the way that the uh, Persians got into the city of Jerusalem was they diverted the river that was running through Jerusalem and they walked under the walls and walked in. And that happened that very night in which the king had called through a great party and he had called in the temple vessels and drank wine and desecrated those. And then that very night, he, uh, his temple, uh, Babylonian, fell to the Persians and the Meds. So... What, what I'm looking at here, and I placed a focus verse in this scripture, and it is Daniel 5, 3. They brought the golden vessels from the temple in Jerusalem. I intend to make a message today on the golden vessels. What are the golden vessels in the 21st century? I intend to tell you, and I intend to show you. They are no longer uh, the, the golden vessels as they were here, but they are the people. They are the people of this church. They are the people of every church. They are the people out in the world that sometimes we don't particularly like. We don't particularly like them, or we don't particularly like the way they're doing things. And I can understand that. But golden vessels of the 21st century are those people that are sitting beside of you, those that are sitting in front of you, those that are sitting behind you. And my friends, it is our duty to make sure that we do not desecrate or put down those golden vessels of the temple. That's where we're going today. I challenge your pastor. I challenge your pastors as we lead you and guide you, that we recognize that we are dealing with something that is precious. We are dealing with golden vessels that God has placed before us. And we are to honor them and never put them down and never desecrate them and make sure that they are used to honor God Almighty Himself. Who did Jesus Christ die for? He died for you. He died for me. Why? Because we are the golden vessels of the 21st century. And my friends, don't ever forget that. 
But just before we get to that particular passage, let's move through the scriptures a little bit. We're going to look at this in three ways. We're going to look at it at Belshazzar's folly, Belshazzar's fear, and Belshazzar's fate. Now, you've heard me say before that when I read scripture, I like to find myself somewhere in that scripture. And I know I'm not a king. But I do know that sometimes I find myself as Belshazzar in the folly. I do not claim to be a king, but I do know that I find myself somewhere in honoring God and looking at God and looking at the power of God and looking why God has called me and placed me where I am. Sometimes it's very fearful. And then I realize Belshazzar's fate. And I realize that somewhere out there, Somewhere out there that I have faith and I hope that I have honored God. I hope I have polished those golden vessels to the point that my fate will not be like Belshazzar's. And I believe the scriptures and honor the scriptures. And I believe that when we become a child of God, that we're a child of God for all eternity. I believe that without a doubt. So I'm not talking about losing salvation here whatsoever. But I am talking that somewhere in the passage, somewhere in the folly, somewhere in the fear, somewhere in the fate, we might find ourselves today as we go through this passage of scripture for possibly the third or fourth or fifth time this year. Now, when I prepare a message, when Keith prepares a message, it is, it is, it is not, it, it, it is led by God. God kind of leads us in the passage that we go. And why do I say that? I say that to say this. If God has had us in this passage five or six times already this year, he's talking to us. He wants our attention. And he don't want to have to go through something like he went through with Belshazzar or Nebuchadnezzar to get our attention. So let's just take a little bit, uh, a little look at, at Belshazzar's folly. And I, <coughs> excuse me, I, I looked in our dictionary to find out a little bit about how we defined folly. And there were several things that were interesting. It talked about a lack of sense or normal procedure. And foresight. And certainly this desecrating the vessels, the sacred vessels, was, was certainly a lack of sense. Was a lack of sense. It was a lack of procedure. And it was the lack of foresight. God has placed you and I here for a purpose. And when he wants to move us, he will move us. He will move us. But right now, we are where God placed us. And we are that golden vessel that Belshazzar desecrated. Brought into his party. And brought in all of his wives and his concubines and all of the people of his party that meant anything to him. Nothing else mattered. He desecrated them. He, he, he used them to where they wasn't intended to be used. He placed them in places they wasn't intended to be placed. And therefore, God did not like the journey that Belshazzar was taking. My thought, my thought, is how pleased is God with the journey that I am taking? Maybe you might think about that. How pleased is God with the journey that you are taking? And never forgetting that you are a 21st century golden vessel in the eyes of God. So Daniel was having his party, but his party abruptly ended. Secondly, we're going to look at Belshazzar's fear. Whenever the writing appeared on the wall, it got his attention. 
The fun had gone. And one day, my friends, whatever fun that we have uh, outside of God's will in our lives, all of the folly that goes on within our world, one day that will end. And then that fear will enter. We are a child of God. And I remind you again that every child of God will one day stand before God to give an account of his life. That is scripture. And when we stand before God, how are we going to feel about the life that Jesus Christ went to Calvary and died in order that you and I might become 21st century golden vessels? So Belshazzar's fear, and, and I can imagine how fearful it would be if we were sitting in here today and all of a sudden there was writing appeared on the wall. A hand appeared and began to write. I don't need to go into the meanie, meanie, tekel, you farce. I don't mean to go into that. But what it simply meant was your days or your kingdom's days have been numbered. And it's finished. You've been weighed in the balances and are found warning. Your kingdom is divided and given to the meds and the persons. I wonder. I wonder what God sees when he weighs me today. And he's not weighing us about our physical weight. He's weighing us about our spiritual being. What does he weigh? I thought about that. God, what are you weighing when you weigh me? Listen to me. Here's what he's weighing. He's weighing our thoughts. He's weighing our thoughts. And our thoughts are our, our mind. Our mind tarries in our thoughts a whole lot more than our actions. Now, our actions come from our thoughts. Belshazzar, Belshazzar thought about bringing the golden vessels that was taken out of the temple in Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. This scripture says that Nebuchadnezzar was his father. Uh, the commentaries says that he wasn't his father. He may have been his grandson or something. But the Bible says his father, Nebuchadnezzar. He knew where they came from. And he knew the fate of his father, of Nebuchadnezzar. He knew that. He knew that Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's fate was because he did not honor God. And yet he did the same thing. But before he brought the golden vessels out, it was a thought in his mind. It was a thought in his mind. And my friends, I'm just reminding you that we do a lot of, and I'm using a Holostonian word here to get your attention, we do a lot of thoughting. We do an awful lot of thoughting. And may we take a, take a, 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 a maybe a, Check on, on our thoughts. Because that is what God is weighing. That is what he's weighing. He's weighing our thoughts. And he's weighing our actions. Our spiritual actions. He don't care what we weigh physically. He's weighing our thoughts and our spiritual actions whenever he weighs us. It's a time for you and I, my friends, or maybe not you. It's a time for me to do some soul searching. What is God seeing when he reads the scales of my life? What is God seeing when he reads the scales of your life? You see, I, I think, I, I kind of think that we can all do a little bit better. I kind of think that all of us in the house can do a little bit better. We can think a little better thoughts. We can do a little better actions spiritually. We can be a little better golden vessel for God. Kind of think that. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong in thinking that. And then thirdly, Belshazzar's fate. 
his faith, his, his kingdom was taken from him. All that he had, all that he lived for, and really all that he worshipped was taken from him. Why? Number one, because he didn't honor God. Number two, he dishonored God's golden vessels. He dishonored God's golden vessels. And may you and I never, ever forget that. Now I want to go back. I want to go back now to our, to our uh, focus verse. And they brought, they brought the golden vessels. They brought the golden vessels. We've already identified those 21st century golden vessels. You, my friends, you, my friends, you, my friends, and you, my friends, are golden vessels. And I hope that we're checking those areas that are tarnished. We're checking those tarnished areas in our lives. And we're going to let the Holy Spirit kind of polish them up. Let the Holy Spirit kind of polish those tarnished areas up a little bit. And he'll do that if we let him. That's why, that's why he's here. That's why he's here. To polish us and to clean us up a little bit. So golden vessels have already been identified. They are taken, they were taken out of the temple of God. Let me remind you about the temple of God. I know you know it. You're, you're Bible scholars, but I, I just love telling you again. In 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 16th and the 17th verse, Paul wrote, Know you not that you are the temple of God. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that an awesome thought? The building here is not God's temple. This is just where God's temples gather. To worship. To grow. And then to move out and be a lighthouse in our homes and in our communities and in our world. Know ye not that you are. It didn't say you may be. If you were good enough, if you dress well enough, if you comb your hair like you should, you are a temple. You are a temple of God. And the Spirit of God dwells in you. What is that spirit? None other than the Holy Spirit. And that's why I say when we identify those little tarnished errors in our lives, whether they're thoughts or whether they're actions, the Holy Spirit will kind of clean them up and shut them up a little bit. That's his job. That's his job. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So let me just remind you, it is our duty to love each other and care for each other and encourage each other. It is our duty None of us would come in and tear up the sanctuary. We wouldn't do that. Well, we don't need to tear up the temple either. So rather than talking about somebody, we should be praying for that person. We should be encouraging that person. We should be helping that person. How do I know that? The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. That's how I know that. I shared something. I shared something. I read something. Uh, well, let's, let's cover this first. They drink wine and praise the gods of gold and silver 
and of brass and iron and wood and stone. These are things that, these are things that, that somehow we feel are precious, but they aren't to God. You know, the most precious thing to God is you and me. Believe it or not. <coughs> Excuse me. The most precious thing to God is not this sanctuary as beautiful as it is. Is not our campus as beautiful as it is. Let me bring it home a little closer. The most precious thing to God, men, is our wives. Is our wives. Wives, the most precious thing to God is your husband. Is your husband. And the most precious thing to God are our children. Are our children. When we take a look at it from that perspective, we kind of control our thoughts a little bit. We kind of control our actions a little bit. We begin to care a little more because we are dealing we're dealing with the sacred vassals of God. That's why, that's why when, I, when I read this verse this time, maybe for the 20 th time, I don't know, I realized that, realized that here was the message. Recognizing 21st century vessels. And... And in, in Daniel 5.5, 5, in the same hour came forth the fingers and writing on the wall. Now, here's something that, that is not mine. I, I tweaked it a little bit, but it comes from another. And I thought it very fitting to share with you as we close out our message today. In our day, idea idolatry. Idea idolatry has become the favorite form of idolatry in our lives. It's my idea. It's all right. It's what I believe. It's all right. Well, let me just remind myself and Taylor and you that if what we believe, what we believe is not all right unless it's all right in the Bible. What we believe is not all right, unless it's all right in the Bible. We are far too sophisticated in our day to worship gods of wood, of stone, of vessels of gold and silver. But we worship the gods of our minds and our ideas. We worship the God of our minds and our ideas. And then the writer went on to share these words. In our day we have dethroned, not the church, mind you, but our society has dethroned the earthly Jesus, stripped him of his deity. A God whose record of the Old Testament history has Nothing more than a collection of interesting stories. Nothing more than a collection of interesting stories. So the writer said this, and I agree. It may well be time for another round of handwritings on the wall. It may well be time for another round of handwritings on the wall. Some say that's already there. We're just not reading them. When we have allowed abortion, when we have allowed same-sex marriages, maybe the handwriting is already there and we've just failed to read it. When it was written, Nebuch uh, Belshazzar, was frightened. My friends, 
there comes a time when being frightened is too late. Bill Shadow would, would have loved, I'm sure, to have changed, but there comes a time when The time that we can change, polish up, allow the Holy Spirit to polish up the areas in our lives is now. Is now. Father, thank you again for carrying us back today to that one passage in the Scripture. And be reminded that they brought out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And they desecrated the holy vessels. May we never forget. May we never forget that the 21st century holy vessels that we deal with today, that we handle today, his people. May we not desecrate our temple, which is our bodies as a Christian. May we not put down others. Maybe other temples that, that God has not yet been allowed to even enter into. And it is our job to pray for those rather than put them down. Your will be done at this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.